I'm Joanne from Magpie's Cottage. I'm Amy. Nice to see you back, or welcome for the first time. It's May 1st. Oh yeah. Isn't it's it? May. I just love the month of May. Yeah. I was born okay. in May. My birthday's in May. That's why uh, I like May. Ah, okay. Yeah, I got six more months. Mm. Oh well. Yeah. This is an exciting six more months because at 62, I can collect Social Security. Ooh, she's going to be rolling in the dough then. Yeah. Mm. So. So you know what I did? What'd you do? This is really funny, kind of. Okay. My husband always has difficulty when it comes to buying anything sort of gift for me. Uh -huh. He never knows what to get me for Christmas. He never knows what to get me for my birthday. Never knows. He doesn't understand that right, diamonds, rubies, and emeralds count for all three, but yeah. doesn't matter. You know, anyways, so I, you know how things pop up in your Facebook feed? Mm hmm. I've been sending him stuff. I share with him only when something kind of yeah. cute <laughs> pops up in my Facebook feed. Okay. I've shared all kinds of cute gnomes with him that I think would be great in our uh -huh. yard. I've shared um, other lawn twirly things that, you know, pop up mm -hmm. in the feed. So you know what I shared yesterday? What did you share? Kvyat. Oh. Ah! You want fancy yarn. Uh, yeah. I said to, he said, so this morning he asked me, he says, so what was that yarn? What is this yarn stuff you're sharing with me? Uh -huh. And I said, for the knitter who has everything. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's very, very rare fiber and very mm -hmm. expensive. And it's like something you buy in a one shot kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, gift yarn or souvenir yarn. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the 100% pure caveat in a lace weight was 150 bucks or something like wow. that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, but obviously it piqued his curiosity. Yeah. Now, they had blends with like silk. You could get like a 50-50 silk blend. You could get, um, and that was down to, I think that one was like 90. Oh. And then there was bargain. another. Bargain. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and then there was another blend that had some cashmere with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Throwing cashmere in makes oh, it give me a cheap. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh and so he was questioning me about this. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Who knows? I'll let you, I'll keep you posted if I end okay. up with a with a package of Kivyat. All right. But um, yeah, it was just really funny. So that's my latest thing. I, okay. I just share it with you. <laughs> hmm. So he obviously goes on Facebook too. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. So good. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> We'll see. Yeah. But yeah, and then but then his one comment to me was so he says, Well, I don't know what color you would like it in. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it comes uh -huh. in a normal array of yarn colors. Yeah. And I looked at him and I said, I don't know, find a sweater that I wear a lot and match it. Uh-huh. Problem yeah. solved. Right. Just open your closet door and you'd get a sense of yeah. colors. Uh, yeah, he wouldn't th now why that would be lost on him. Yeah. Okay. I know what color golf shirts shirts to never buy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, but and 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 when you see them in his closet, they're all lined up. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many men do that. Line things up by color. Yeah, I don't know. Not. I a mean, lot. seriously, uh, he's got a gazillion golf shirts. He plays mm -hmm. golf a lot. Okay, so all his golf shirts are lined up: the red ones, the blue ones, the green ones. It's crazy. Oh my! He lines them up. Mm. Yeah. Well, what can oh, I say? Well. So, that was my inspiration for the day. Yep, yep. So, what have we been doing? We were at a retreat. Yeah. Yes. I finally got that video up yesterday. It took me a whole week to put it together. Well, you know what happened was the footage I took of the people playing the game up on yeah, the stage, yeah. it saved in my iPad as a MOV file instead of MP4. Well, what the heck? And so, it took like two days to get up to the cloud okay. and then it took another whole day to get down to my computer so I was like what's up with that and then yeah then I had to move it around and edit it and I added a whole bunch of pictures I added all the pictures I took during show and tell at okay. the end and I um, put some of the video when I walked around and of them playing the game at the beginning Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so for those of you who are going to have retreat envy as you watch that video, 
uh -huh. we have the next one scheduled for January 20th. Next right? year. Yeah, January 20th. And I didn't put it up on the website. I said I was going to put it up on the website right away, but you know what? I want to get the bill for this one because yeah. their contracts never have the amount of the room rates. It just, the contract just has what the deposit is. Okay. So I want to make sure the room rates didn't go up before. Or if they do, people should know about it. I mean, yeah. I, I, okay. I don't yeah. blame a, a place like that from raising, increasing mm -hmm. their room rate from one year right. to the next. I right. don't. I mean, no. not a lot, of course, but you know, I'm I'm just looking at it from the business, you know, point of view. Yeah. Um, okay. There, they have because of the pandemic a lot of increase in costs. Right. Certainly, food has to be managed differently, but oh, there's yeah. other things that has to be managed differently. Like, well, we keep hearing about the price of toilet paper. They go yeah. through a lot of toilet paper at a place like that. Sure, sure. You know. Yeah. You know, so if they end up, I would anticipate uh -huh, an, an increase, raise it. Yeah. A, you know, a room rate. I, I would, right. I would, so I would not I be surprised. So I want to make sure, I don't have the new contract for next year. We, we just did it all by, you know, writing it down on the calendar so far. So it'll probably be another week or, or maybe two before I get it up on the website. But it will be up there very soon. Yeah, I suppose uh, we got to book our rooms and stuff. You want, right. You want right. Well, you guys will have to make your deposits. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can have, wait, what is it? 12 single rooms and 11 double rooms. Okay, so that's 22, total. 33 people total? Yeah. Um, I thought it was 35 total. Oh, I maybe. don't know how that works. But I'll have to look at it, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we can have, and that's it. Once that's full, that's full. So, Well, it was a early. wonderful, wonderful weekend. So. Oh, we had so much fun. It was so relaxing. So nice to be with all the people again. Mm -hmm. that I think was that's really the hot nice. You know, this whole last year, there, there were people at the retreat I have literally not seen for a year. Mm -hmm. You know, and these are people that I, you know, have yeah. for prior to this knit with every week. Sure. You know, and so. some of these people have just been, you know, hold away in their house for a whole year and not getting out and doing much. So I think it was good for them to get out and be with people again, too. And the I've been vaccinated buttons. Yeah, that was cute. Did they put those out there? Or no, did you no, find Pat, them? Patty brought those. Patty brought, well, bless her heart. Yeah. Thank you, Patty. I have to admit, yeah. I loved my button and yeah. I wore it proudly. So, uh huh, yep. Um, and 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 oh, while well, we're talking, this is what I finished last weekend, and I'm wearing it. I block. I came home mm -hmm. on Sunday and blocked it right away Sunday night. So this is my Malabrigo um, temperance shawl. We mm -hmm. um, this was a Malabrigo knit along um, for the month of April, and so it's three skeins of Malabrigo sock. You know what? I think I realized this when I was um, actually when snipping off the ends. What? I miss knitting with Malabrigo sock. Oh, okay. I have not knit a shawl out of Malabrigo sock in I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. You know, you get, this is a kettle dye, mm -hmm. and so there always is going to be color variation with a kettle mm -hmm. dye too, but you get stuck in the latest and greatest indie dyer hot yarn, mm -hmm. and then you forget about your tried and true. Mm -hmm. And I think when it comes to shawl knitting, Malabrigo sock is probably one of your most affordable, um, nicest yarns. I, I, I've, you know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, because Malabrigo sock is what, about around 20 bucks? Mm -hmm. I think it is 20 bucks for sock. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you get 440 yards. Yeah. And, and those tonals are variegated. Yeah. And some of their tonals are absolutely beautiful. So, and they're deep enough color-wise saturation that they can work well as a solid, even though they're not. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, like this one, um, the stripes, you can see the darkest stripe in here. All right, the darkest stripe is eggplant. And that is mm -hmm. technically purple. It is not brown, but it mm -hmm. looks brown when you put it with Primavera, which is a variegated, mm -hmm. and um, Gingy, 
which is this camel colored. It's beautiful. Um, it's called Gingy, and that one is a, is a tonal as well. Mm -hmm. And it's this camel colored tonal. So on this one, I've got two tonals, a dark and a light, and a variegated. And this three color combo works so well. And in th there's a Ravelry group out there, um, mm -hmm. Malabrigo Junkies, and the, 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 the eye candy for finished shawls, for the shawls, mm -hmm. was just a blast to see. And I, mm -hmm. no, like, I put this on this morning, and I go, oh, my gosh. It's, well, it's going to be warm out today. I'm going to have this yeah. off in an hour. But um, it is so soft and drapes beautifully. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, there's crumbs. Um, <laughs> well, it was a, a little breakfast. A little <laughs> breakfast crumb. It happens, what can you say? <laughs> But, I mean, yeah. seriously, I had forgotten how much I love this for mm -hmm. shawls. And it yeah. wasn't until after I blocked this thing and put it on this morning that mm -hmm. it really, oh, yeah, Amy, duh. And, and, and the thing was is I have got a boatload of this stuff mm -hmm. in stash. And so I'm starting to think about, you know, a lot of the different two-color, three-color shawl options. And, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, putting, putting Malabrigo sock together is always easy to do okay yeah so that was my other inspiration for the day i am full mm -hmm. of inspiration today oh my goodness we better watch out mm -hmm. i think so okay so what else we got to talk about um oh we didn't announce a winner in the um hey okay that's not my department in the retreat one yeah and i was gonna stick one in quick but there's such a short time i thought no i drew the winner i'll and That'll be Laurel. Laurel won. Laurel yeah, won. right, Laurel. Hi, Laurel. Um, and so I got the winner drawn, and then we'll combine last episode and this episode okay. together, and I'll pick one out of all of those okay. for um, the next drawing. Sounds like a plan. So, yep. So, yep, that's that for the drawing. So if you want to enter, just enter a comment below um, and you'll be in for the drawing for next time for a $10 gift certificate at Magpie's Cottage. And it can be used online or in the store. Cool. So, yeah. so you have to do your, th you know, your subscribe, your thumbs mm -hmm. up or thumbs down, and certainly comment. Mm -hmm. You know, the three things that everybody who watches a YouTube has to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, we better... Um, show your FO of your secret things so you can put them away before people walk in. Oh, that's so thoughtful of you. Well, I have friends today. It's Mystery Saturday. And so this month's mystery project is a gnome. <laughs> this is Gandalf the Grey. Aww. Now, for those of you who are Lord of the Rings fans, I modeled my color choices off of Gandalf. I just wanted to knit a Gandalf. Uh -huh. So that's why. And then Cora went and found me this stick. Oh, that's <laughs> Okay. Cute. But there is, in one of the early, the first, I think it's the first one, he's, you know, going through the ranks of wizardry or whatever. Right. And he is called Gandalf the Grey. And right. then it comes back as Gandalf the White. Yeah. Well, okay, so I knitted a Gandalf the Grey. So this is some Patton's um, wool uh -huh. um, for the hat. And then the body is... Uh, Cocoa, was it cocoa? Coffee beans. Coffee oh, beans. Yeah. Plymouth coffee beans. And um, so this one is worsted weight, and I don't usually knit mine out of worsted weight, but I knit a worsted weight one. So he is the ruler of the gnomes at my house. Oh, cool. I love this guy. He's like, okay, I have knit probably, what, I think I got seven of them done. Okay. Seven gnomes. And I love knitting gnomes. You can personalize uh -huh. them, you can play with them. This one, actually, for our class, has all kinds of technique in it okay. that we're going to explore. Um, all the ruffles, ruching. Mm -hmm. That's what makes his, his nose, 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 is a bobble. So um, the beard is a really cool technique, which um, I, I can't wait. You unravel it. Now, here's the funny thing. Okay, so this is the worsted weight, and he's good size. I got weights mm -hmm. in the bottom. Oh. This one has washers, so he stands nice. Okay. Um, and then his little brother, this is Nitschke. And Nitschke, same gnome, exact same pattern, but I did a few things differently. One, self-striping sock yarn. Two, um, the hat is 
this is all fingering weight. And then the beard is the exact same pattern. So here's the deal. With the beard, on, on Gandalf, I just knit it, and then I did the unravel technique that's in the pattern. This one, I knit it, I blocked it, and then did the unravel technique. So oh, you can see so it that it kinks. kept all the kinks stay in. I like that. Isn't that I cool? I like that a lot. Isn't that cool? Same beard, same pattern, same everything. Wow. But that was the impact of it. Yeah, so, that's you know, neat. so when it, when it comes to these gnomes, I'm telling you, there is so much knitting technique in it. I know, I okay, mm -hmm. I will be honest with you, I'm nervous about this one because mm -hmm. we were knitting things for the house in this mystery series. Mm -hmm. And okay, yeah, gnomes decorate my house. There's no doubting that. I have them in my garden, I have garden gnomes, I have them in the house now with indoor mm -hmm. gnomes. Um, they literally sit on my bookshelves in my living room. And mm -hmm. I, I, I love these guys. Cora has her own gnomes. So I just never, I didn't want to, you know, force a gnome on my mystery knitters. But mm -hmm. there's so much a technique that comes with knitting a stuffed something. It wouldn't have to be a gnome that you kind of got to mm -hmm. think differently about your knitting. Sure. So these, this is why we're going to be knitting gnomes. And look at the size difference. I mean, yeah. I expected a size difference but I didn't expect it to be mm -hmm. that big. So now I've got yarn at home, I've got some DK at home. I wanna knit a DK one, same pattern. Mm -hmm. and, in the middle. and I'm gonna be right in the middle of them. Do, but, the, uh, do the kinky beard again, I really like that. That's cool. Okay, I guess I will. All right, so we okay. gotta hide these yeah, guys. Hide those now. Comes in. You never know, we might get visitors shortly. Sometimes yes. they come up to a half hour early. So that's Sometimes till, not till our time. So this and that are my FOs for the week. That's okay. all I got. All right. Well, this week I was, well, at the retreat, I was doing a little bit of uh, English paper piecing. Let's see. You've seen this one mm -hmm. and this one already. I finished this one. I think I was in the middle of it last time. Wow. This is one that was fussy cut. That's just too pretty. So that was that one. And then I did some, a couple more that were fussy cut, more hexes with frogs. This one's a jewel shape, so it doesn't have a center. They each go down to the center. Oh, wow. So then you can have that design point right down into the center. Oh, that's cool. And I did another little one with bumblebees and butterflies. And then stripes are always fun for English paper piecing. You can get a really cool effect. But this one I ran out of fabric, so one of them is sideways. <laughs> That's either my hanger or my stem, whichever way I look at it. There you go. Um, did I show this last week? You showed it on the retreat one. Okay. All right. So you've seen that already. So that's what I did at the retreat was make a couple more of those. Um, oh, maybe the one with the frogs I finished at home. So, um, that's I know that. you started that. I saw you working on that at the retreat, yeah. As long as I got my bag open, I'll show my work in progress for the week, too. I tried knitting at the retreat, Saga of the Hands. I tried knitting at the retreat. It froze up solid, like it wouldn't even open. But it didn't hurt, so, I mean, that, that was a step good. up. But I've still de I decided to keep waiting before I knit. So I tried crocheting with that big Addy um, ergonomic hook. No pain at all. So right now I'm crocheting. I tried knitting a little bit last night. It went okay, it didn't hurt, but again, it, it started locking up, so I stopped right away. We'll see. Um, but I started crocheting. I don't remember if I talked about this. I may have already. You I did started, on the yeah, knitting. this, and you made a knitting pattern into a crochet pattern. Um, so I just wanted to show you, first of all, I changed colors to go to the darker color now. And I split for the sleeves. So the sleeves are split now. So that's how far I got. Wow. Yep. And then this is gonna go, it's gonna just be blocks. I'm not fading it or anything. Um, it's gonna be black at the bottom. 
So basically three colors. Yep, just color block of three colors. You're gonna wear a t-shirt underneath it? Depends on how it blocks. Okay. If it puffs up enough, I don't have to. That's what my hope is. Well, that's an interesting. Because I don't like wearing, having to wear t-shirts underneath sweaters. They, you know, you kind of, yeah. But there are some that I've knit that I'd like to wear a cami. I just wear a cami. Yeah. Well, you know, and see, if you look at it, the top half is back and forth, and the bottom half of this is just round and round. And the round and round seems a little denser than the top half. You're right, So it, does. it might be okay. You know, if the only thing that's showing through is my bra straps, yeah. that's okay. All right. That's a fashion statement I hear these days. Oh, gosh. Gosh, yes. So, and I don't think I own a white bra. They don't sell those anymore, do sure they? Sure they do. Oh. <laughs> I never see them. I, own, I, I don't wear white ones. I always wear nude color, uh -huh. you know? Mine are all ones. colors or leopard print or I got a wow. pink one. I got flowers. She's got risque underwear. I got, what do I got on today? Oh, leopard print. Purple leopard print. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're all I don't all have anything like, like that. that. I'm just pretty straight laced here. Uh-huh. So what are you working what on? What am I working on? I have three things. Okay, first off, this was my door prize yarn, and I am in love with this yarn. It is called Sea Isle Cotton. It is a Plymouth yarn, and Joanne's going to get me more of it. So watch for this to come into the shop eventually. This was, and I swatched it, and I, it's worst, it doesn't feel worsted, and the yardage is insane for worsted. Yeah, it this, was over 300 yards. Yeah, over 300 yards on this ball of worsted weight yarn, and you don't find that, okay? Um, but it beefs up lovely and creates this lovely fabric. So this was a swatch I did the other night in the round with it. And what I want to knit out of it, the gauge isn't quite right. So I'm okay. going to have to try another up one needle. Oh. If I can get the gauge I want, and it, I still like the fabric with, this is on a seven, if I go to the mm -hmm. eight, I think it's a go. Okay. This is gonna be a sweater either way. It's just, is, is it gonna be a weekender? Yeah. Because- And if you don't get gauge, just Change make the a size, size bigger. I yeah. I know. Well, I wanna see what my gauge is if on the eight. Okay. All right, and, and then we'll see and, from there. And what the fabric's like. Yeah, what that looks like. So, um, but it barely- Can I feel it? Yes. Um, oh yeah, it, that feels nice. Yeah, and 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 it barely moved size wise. Oh, barely moved. Really? Did you wash it in the washer or just in? Soap? No, because you can't wash this yarn in the washer. Oh. So I didn't. It's Some a dry with, flat. With cotton, and you don't wash it in the washer. That's different. Yep, it did not say machine wash. We okay. can double check that. Maybe okay. it, you know, but I don't know if I got the band in my bag or not. So I, I just, I, I, I had to swatch it, so I swatched it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and thank you again to all of the people that donated for the retreat. Plymouth Yarn, they excelled. They gave, what was there, 12 or 15 door prizes yeah. that were kits. They These were kits. Yeah, like this one was to make the sea aisle. It's a cowl. cowl. Now the cowl, I'll be honest, uh -huh. wasn't my cup of tea, but that's so what? Yeah, I, but you got the yarn for it. And the other one... Okay, but the thing is, I got the yarn for it. Okay, uh -huh. this is one skein of yarn they gave up and a pattern, which is, you know, it was a mesh gold, nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> it's going to lead to four more skeins. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, there Guess were that was some worth kits that were two skein kits. So they came with the pattern, a zipper clear project bag. Yeah, a little pouch so, thing was nice. Yeah, yeah, they really excelled at, at the prizes. Yeah, it was nice yeah, of them. We got some from Barocco. We got Universal Yarn. We got Bryson Distributing, who does all of our needles. So we got really good prizes from the vendors this year. Well, I... Probably I'm, nobody's asking for prizes this year. <laughs> maybe, that's why they got them. Up. Yeah, who knows? But, but yeah. I will tell you, I just, I am impressed with that yarn. Good. So, and and I fell in love with the color, actually. Yeah. Because I just love that coral. Mm -hmm. um, and 
that's what I really, and it has beautiful other colors. In On the website I looked yesterday, they have a lime green. Oh, it's gorgeous. Somebody won a, the lime green. Well, there was two different greens, and I like that lighter one. Was it the lighter one was the lime? There was a minty green, a light blue, a lime green. The, and no, oh, okay. this was on the website, it said new. So I don't know if you had that one or not. Okay, because there were two different greens that we gave away, and... Yeah, they were both gorgeous. Well, I, I tell you, for a worsted weight, 50-50 blend, cotton wool blend, I, I tell you, it is lovely, lovely mm -hmm. yarn. Yep. So, yeah, so my other UFOs or WIPs. This one you haven't seen yet. Okay. This one's been fun. I have been on a mystery knit-along kick. Okay. So there was this mystery knit-along and it started out, this was clue one. It looks like a knitted knocker. Looks like a knitted knocker, looks like a head, but it's not. Because if, remember when I said to you the Atlantic, two weeks ago or so, I said, hey, I need some eyes? Oh, yeah. Well, that was in the material list, you needed eyes. You can't put eyes in this thing anymore if you close it up and the direction said to close it up. So, yeah. this is not a head. I don't know what oh. it is. Then we had, let's see, clue two. Was this? Okay, it's long. It's got a butt, so I'm sure this is a body. Yeah. Kind of cool how they did the bottom there. All right, and there's increases, and this they said not to stuff it. So maybe this is a body. I don't know. I don't know. Could be a bug. At any and this is the belly, and this is the butt, and there's going to be a head, yeah. An insect. Oh, that's that's possible. Yeah. Could oh, be. yeah, that could be an ant. Because then, um, the next week, we got this. Now, when I said uh, earlier about techniques, this is... I, you had to make two of these. Only two, yeah. not six or eight. Well, there's two more, but they're different lengths, so this uh, is a four-legged so. creature. These are okay. probably legs. All right, now, but what's interesting is the leg is made with an I-cord. Uh -huh. This is a hand, and the digits cool. on the hand uh -huh. are bobbles. Uh -huh. And these are little bobbles. So we got this, and then the next week, came a bit thicker eye cord all right and mm. this one they said sew it flat they did not say that with the hand or the other component mm -hmm. and then here we got toes okay. and these were a bigger bobble it was it's still a bobble uh -huh. same technique but basically it's one more back and forth mm -hmm. all right and then the leg here this is all eye cord did they tell you to make it pink I picked the color. Okay, then it's not a pink flamingo. <laughs> well, I guess flamingos don't have hands. Never mind. I'm, no, I, I'm just yeah. So now we've got two yet. legs. All right. Now one of the things that I think I'm going to do is I'm going to block this mm -hmm. because I don't like the way my eye cord pulls in here. I want to fix that. Okay. Um, and I want to. There's some bumps to it. Okay. So I'm going to block it. And that's something that when you're knitting stuffies, blocking your individual pieces like this mm -hmm. is useful. Mm -hmm. Because this is never, obviously, this eye cord's not going to get stuffed. So right. all of the, the, the bumps and the mm -hmm. lumps and that stuff need to be smoothed out somehow. Mm -hmm. So blocking would do that. So I might just take the legs and this body part here and throw them in the sink today. I won't get the okay. next clue till next Thursday. Then, so Thursday of this week was this, and we knit a bow. So my person, my critter here, has mm -hmm. a bow. Okay. I don't know. And then there is, they did say you need worsted weight yarn for, uh -huh. in, a, in a neutral color, and then they said worsted weight in a contrast. 
So okay. that's why I went with the gray. I could have gone with black. Black would have been good with this too. Mm -hmm. And I had some black at home. But seeing as though I had mm -hmm. the gray out, didn't have to get up. So yeah. So this is, I will get the final clue and how to put all this together on Thursday. So that's what okay. I'm going to do Thursday. I'm going to put this baby all together on Thursday morning. Okay. And we'll see. But yeah, I think I'm going to definitely soak those legs so I can get that eye uh -huh. cord nice the way yeah. I like it. Because it's kind of, eh funky. Mm -hmm. And this is all I got left of my main color. You needed one skein of the main color and about a hundred yards of the other two. Okay. So. Well, that'll be interesting to yeah. see. Yeah. So I've been working on this, you know, every Thursday I get my clue. Okay. And I've been working on it. That'll be interesting. Yeah. I was going to bring it to the retreat, but I thought the clue that I got on Thursday before the retreat treat was one le was the legs. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to lug it for that. Okay. So I did it when I got home. So that, and then I'm going to use this. So I might as well leave it out. I cast, when I finish this at the retreat, then I cast on um, a bird watcher. And I've been moving right along with it. So I have the back done. Ta-da! And then I am working my way up the front. There. So it has this great texture on the bottom. And then it's a sea of stockinette. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Why do you have a lifeline? It's not a lifeline. Oh. It's a marker. Okay. I wanted to mark, and this is one of Amy Schulze's sneaky tricks and tips. When you have to measure, like this was knit in the round to the armholes. Okay. And then you have to measure from the armholes up to a certain height before you mm -hmm. start shoulder shaping. Okay, so this is the armhole height? Yep. Okay, that yep. makes sense. I put that armhole height in there because it's easier to lay this flat and measure from that armhole height Mm -hmm. than yep, it is to do sense. it along the armhole edge because right. that's going to be stockinette and it's going to be mm -hmm. curly and it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. So I put these markers in and I measure mm -hmm. from there. The other thing about that is that you can count your rows mm -hmm. much easier here than you would on mm -hmm. your edge. Yep. So by doing it here and going counting up, I know that my front and my back will have the exact same number of rows. Mm-hmm. And that's an important thing, too. Yeah. You don't have to worry about measuring exactly. You just count your rows. Did, you, did they see what I'm talking about? Yeah, you can see it. It's right here. I just take some waste yarn, and I run it through the stitches to mark the row. Okay. So I have it here, and then I have another one on the front. Okay. Right there. Yep, makes perfect sense. Yeah, so I try to always... When I'm thinking about shoulder shaping, when you gotta knit the same length, I mm -hmm. measure it in the center of the piece, not on the yeah. edge, because the edge can get distorted. Just with wrapping your yarn around on the, you know, that edge mm -hmm. stitch is always wonky. So if you measure yeah. it in the middle, you get a much more consistent measurement. So that's yep. what that's there for. So this will be definitely, I will knit this afternoon on this because it's mm -hmm. Kentucky Derby Day and I'm gonna watch horse racing. I would I oh. do it once a year, and so, so I will wear finish. a big hat and drink mint tulips. I will drink a mint julep. Yes, okay. I have to go to the grocery store and get mint, but I have all the other uh -huh. ingredients. Okay, and I don't wear a stupid hat. Okay, I could I suppose I'll just go into the closet and get a grapevine wreath that's got flowers stuck on it and put it <laughs> on my head or something silly like that. Oh. Um, yeah, we'll see. But at any rate, so yeah, okay. this will be done. With any luck, I'll wear it next week on the podcast. Who knows? Okay, all right. So that's what I'm working on. Cool. Oh, and the other thing I did on this that is, I guess, useful information is because this is a hand eye. I'm alternating all the way through. Uh -huh. And so with this, when I was in the round, it was one roll of one ball, one roll of the next ball. But back yeah. and forth, what I'm doing is I knit across, uh -huh. slide my stitches back, knit across a second oh, time. Oh, you are doing it that way now. I am okay. doing it. That makes so much sense. Now the okay. only the, the only issue I had with doing that was when I got to the short rows to bring the neckline up in the back. Oh, okay. So then I just went down to one ball, but yeah. in the end I I know where it is, but I don't think you can yeah. find it. So 
it works. But yeah, All so right. this will be off the needles, and then I will be casting on something new. Okay. Um, as soon as this is off the needles. Okay. I don't know what the something is going to be. Probably a shawl, because I have a test knit to do. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably do that. Okay. But, cool. yeah. Okay. I've been monogamous lately, and it's been kind of fun. Yeah, you get stuff done that way. You do. Yeah. So. And now I think you have a bunch of new yarn to show us. Oh, I got a basket full. Yeah. Full, full. Okay. So, in the shop, we've got... Um, a new, is this new? Yes, we didn't carry ultra wool before. Well, it's from Barocco, and it is 100% superwash. <coughs> Excuse me. So this would probably be comparable to like a Cascade 220 superwash. Right. But I will tell you, just holding it, it feels beefier. Mm -hmm. It does. It feels a whole lot beefier right away. Yeah. So we've got three solids like pretty uh, wine color and, a, and mm -hmm. a peacock blue. And then this lighter one, um, this pink, very pretty. So those three, and then there's some hand paints and that end up mm -hmm. being speckled. So we've got this one, I always call them the baby colors, they're pastels. Mm -hmm. And then this one is red and green. So this would be more like a primary color speckle. All right, and then this one is the earth tones. Earth tones, olive green, wine colored, mm -hmm. whatever. And if you wanted to put something together, these two go well. Mm -hmm. And I would say that these two go well. And then these two. And that was, I'm sure, purely by accident, but. No, it wasn't. Oh, <laughs> couldn't you just like. She has absolutely no fun. No, I picked them out. Okay, and this so. is, I brought this back. Also, because this is the swatch that we got from Barocco, I believe. No, Lori did that. Lori knit this for us? Yeah. Oh, man. Yep. She got it done already? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she made a special delivery to get it to me right away. Well, all right. So Lori swatched it. Doesn't say what size needle she used. I'm guessing a seven. Whatever the label said she used... Whatever it's uh, like seven, eight. So, probably a seven. Yeah. And then we've got some Barocco. This is a pretty popular yarn right now. Mm -hmm. It's called Barocco Remix. Um, and it, okay, it's got it's a remix, so it's a blend, and it's got these little fuzzy things on it. Okay, so listen to this mixture: thirty percent nylon, twenty percent, twenty-seven percent cotton, twenty-four percent acrylic, ten percent silk and 9% linen. Okay, so all the little fuzzies that you see on the yarn, little noils they're called, that's where your silk and your linen comes in. The main fiber that's twisted around is where your nylon, cotton, and acrylic are. And this is the worsted weight, all right? But mm -hmm. we also have it in light, and it's, these are the three colors. We got this beautiful green, which I'm swatched already, and that will be a sweater um, and then we've got a navy blue which I want to swatch but I won't swatch it because I just did it in this color so why would I do it in this color but um, in blue and then a pink all right now these this stuff's great for summer sweaters this is the worsted weight I am using the light and we have these two colors in light so that's what's new in the shop Mm -hmm. This re this remix is I can't wait. The, the sweater I'm going to knit is in is a is a Barocco pattern. It's called Doratio, and I'm looking forward to knitting it. I I actually cool. honestly like it was one of these really bizarre moments after I did my swatch and I washed and I blocked it and I dried it. My gauge was dead on, dead on to the yarn mm -hmm. label. Wow, well, that yeah. don't happen. My roll gauge is always mm -hmm. off. Yeah. I can get a stitch gauge just by changing needle sizes. Right. But no matter what I do, I can never get that stitch and row gauge both to match. Right. And it did. Cool. I don't get it. But Very so nice. that that cast on actually might come as soon as the bird watcher is done. Okay. Because I want I, I like I I'm in a summer t shirt kind of mode. Mm-hmm. So I kinda wanna do that. Okay. Yep, still time. 
by by the end of June or beginning of July, you got to switch to fall sweaters. I know, and I already have those lined up. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my plan is the Doratio, mm -hmm. um, then the Sea Island Cotton. I want to knit those two okay. before the end of June. Okay. And um, then come July, I'll switch over to the winter mode, and I'm going to knit a poncho. Oh, yeah, we're going to do a poncho at ZK. We are. Decided. Yeah. Weren't you in that conversation? Missed it. Oh, a ZK project is to make the simple folded poncho. I oh, think, yeah, I'm going to do that. Mouse. Yeah, yarns. I might cast that on. I'm gonna, I got. just got to dig the yarn out of stash. Yeah, so that's going to be our ZK project. Everybody's going to okay. work on Because when you're at a retreat, you want simple knitting. And that's no a brain sea knitting. of simple knitting. Yeah, the sea of stockinette. Oh, my mm -hmm. God, it's an eternity of stockinette. Yeah, but I'm going to crochet something. So I bought a crochet stitch dictionary because i got to go pick a stitch out. But I'll just make it the same way. Oh, I'll my gosh. It so it's exactly the same, but crochet. Martha Stewart's coming home poncho. She oh. wore, when, they, when Martha Stewart was released from jail after uh -huh. her stint in the, in the federal penitentiary, mm -hmm. she had on a poncho. And I believe it was a crocheted poncho. Mm. And it's called Coming Home. And mm -hmm. I think you should knit Martha Stewart's oh. Coming Home. Well, I want to knit the same, I mean, crochet the same as what everybody's knitting. So I'll just use the schematic. Okay. And put my own stitch in it. Okay. So then I'm the same. Here, I, I was going to make same. her jailbreak, you know, kind of poncho. No, no not listening. No jailbreak for me. Okay. All right. Well, we better get going because your class attendants are all going to start Wandering in, in here soon. Yep, it's ten ten two. So, okay. All right. Remember to like and subscribe and comment if you want to win ten dollars. And we'll see you next week. All right. Happy May, everybody. Bye bye. bye, -bye.